Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today in the garage we've got this Kawasaki Vulcan 800 Drifter, which are pretty rare. But this rare bird has some electrical issues that we need to get sorted out. So let's get started. Alright, so if you're new to this channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell because that helps me make videos like this one, which in turn helps people fix their cars, motorcycles, and scooters. Alright, so let's get to the story of this drifter here. Apparently, the previous owner used to like to start this bike up and leave it running in the parking lot, and uh, apparently his neighbors didn't quite appreciate that. So one day while the bike was running, they came in with a knife and cut the wires to his stator and his ignition switch and some other various pieces of his harness. The bike then changed hands and the new owner repaired the wiring harness to the best of their ability, but the bike still wouldn't start. They then replaced the ignition module, but the bike is still exhibiting a crank but no start. So, the first step in the diagnostics of this bike is to verify that it does not have spark, like the owner claims, and to do that, we're gonna use an inline spark tester. All right, so I've got the seat off here, and the way that these inline spark testers work is it has a boot just like the spark plug boot, and this goes onto your spark plug, and this mimics the end of a spark plug so it goes right into the other side of the boot, and it'll flash every time it gets a signal to spark the spark plug. So I'm just going to take this boot off the back cylinder here. Snake her out a bit. I'll throw this down on there. Put this boot in together. Now we'll crank her over and see if she sparks. Alright, she is not flashing. Now you can do this the old school way of removing the spark plug and grounding it against the cylinder head and observing it that way. That's another way to do it, but this is just a little bit of a quicker way to do it. Alright, so we verified that this bike does not have spark. So the next thing we're going to do is repair all these wires correctly with solder and heat shrink. And that's just going to make sure that all these wires have good continuity and are sending all the signals they should be sending. Alright, so we got our wire harness looking good here. Now let's go ahead and crank it over again and see if we don't have spark. Now I don't really expect this to be the actual repair, but we need to make sure that everything is getting to where it needs to be before we can actually run an accurate diagnostic. So, and see what we got. No spark, okay. So, next thing we're gonna, oh, I missed one. Here, let me show you. There's one more tape job up here on the igniter. And I'm not sure what's going on there. So let me go ahead and repair that real quick. All right, so now as far as we know, the wiring harness is back to where it needs to be. So what I want to target next is this ignition switch because this is a brand new key and a brand new switch. I want to make sure that everything is connecting the way it should be. So I've got my wiring schematic up here. We need to look at our ignition switch. Ignition switch. Okay, so in the on position, it sends battery voltage down the brown wire and down the gray wire. So let's use our test light here. This is the connector for the ignition switch. Let's hook my test light up. Okay, I don't have it. Got power there. I got power there. Okay, so the ignition switch is wired correctly. Um, that's good to know. 
everything is installed correctly and needs to go, we can leave that alone and move on down the line. So we're going to go back into our service manual and find the pinout for the ignition unit. All right, so I found a little better schematic of the igniter circuit. And so basically what's going on is this brown wire here is supplying power to the junction box and that powers up all our ignition fuses. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that we've got power up to the junction box so we don't have a break in the wire up to that point and make sure all those fuses are good. Here is the junction box. Everything looks connected and nice. Just access the fuses real quick here. Run my test light over them all. See if we have a blown one. All right, all those are looking good. This is just a spare fuse. You can tell it's getting rusty. So we know that brown wire is doing its job. Next thing we need to do is we need to check that gray wire. So that gray wire was the one that was disconnected. So let me just disconnect the igniter. Make sure that gray wire is getting power. And it is. Let's move further into the wiring diagram. All right, so we know the customer installed ignition switch is wired correctly and it is sending the correct voltage both to the igniter unit and the junction box and we have good fuses. So let's go back into the wiring diagram and see what else interfaces with these two units. All right, so it looks like this bike has a side stand switch and that ties into the lighting circuit, probably on the ground side. And it also goes into the junction box. All right, so let's see if we're getting the correct signal out of that side stand switch. So it looks like we have a green with white tracer going into the junction box. There we go, green with white tracer. So that should have a ground on it. Okay, we've got ground. Let's see if the switch does anything. No, looks like the switch is not operating it. And that should cut the ground away from that. Well, let's unplug it and see what we got. So basically what I've done here is I have disconnected this wire from the connector. And I did that because I didn't see a change when I moved the side stand in and out that should interrupt this signal of ground. So let's go ahead and hook our spark tester back up and see what we got. Okay, still no spark. All right, so it looks like those yellow and black wires that were cut down with the rest of the stator wires are actually to the pickup coil. Now, the igniter uses the pickup coil sort of like a crank position sensor, and it uses that information to know when to fire the spark plugs. So if it's not getting a signal from there, it's not gonna fire the spark plugs. So let's go ahead and find the testing procedure for the pickup coil and test that. All right, so I found some good information here. It says the pickup coil resistance should be 380 to 570 ohms. So, get my handy meter out here, and let's test it. All right, so here's the connector. I'm just gonna disconnect that. Set my multimeter to resistance, and we're gonna check the resistance across the pickup coil. So. Put our meter in here. It looks like we have about 0.480 kilo ohms. Now if that is equivalent about 480 ohms. We're just on the auto ranging function here. Now another trick I've learned is you can set your meter to AC voltage, connect the leads and crank the engine, and the pickup coil should actually induce just a little bit of AC voltage. So let's try that real quick, see what it yields us. See that, we're getting a little bit of voltage out of it. But the manufacturer hasn't provided us a spec for that, so we don't know if we're getting anything good. All right, so it looks like our pickup coil is testing good, which is a good sign.
All right, so our next step is we're gonna see if the igniter is seeing the correct signal from the pickup coil. We wanna make sure we don't have a break in our wire from the pickup coil all the way to the igniter. So we've got it disconnected again. We've got my meter hooked up and auto ranging, and I'm just gonna pin on the yellow and the black. And we have the same reading at the igniter as we did down at the pickup coil. So we know that that is all good to go. All right, so the last step in the puzzle here is to test the igniter. Now in the service manual, we have a little chart here that shows you the pinout of the igniter. It shows you if you connect your test lead to certain points, what resistance you should get across those terminals. And that's to see if you have a shorted component inside of the igniter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and start at pin number one and look it up on the chart here and you say pin number one to pin number two should be infinite resistance. Then you go pin number one to pin number three should be infinite resistance. And here you have your positive test lead, you have your negative test lead. That's to test if there's an internal diode in there. So, let me go ahead and test those against each other and make sure everything is happy there. Psych! Okay, I was gonna do the uh, pin to pin test to make sure my igniter module is all good and ready to go, but I noticed in my wiring schematic, I did not have the correct number of wires to my ignition module, which means this is not actually correct for this bike. Now, I went to a deep dive to try and figure out exactly what these extra wires to my ignition module are, and I found that this bike has a throttle position sensor. So, that means that as you give it throttle, it's adjusting the ignition timing for smoother operation, lower emissions, all that good stuff. So I assume some of these wires go to the throttle position sensor. So the last thing I wanna check is the service manual says that there are interlock diodes inside this junction block and it has a little pin to pin to check your resistance across them. So I'm gonna take this junction block out and I'm gonna check it pin to pin. All right, so I've got the junction box here. I'm just gonna set it down in my vise, squeeze it nice and easy just for an extra set of hands. Now in the manual here, it gives you a pin that you need to test continuity with. And it says here, resistance should be low in one direction and more than 10 times in the other direction. The first one we're gonna do is pin 13 to pin eight. So let's see here, pin 13 is right here in the middle. Eight's down here. Okay, that's good, no continuity. And we have 12 mega ohms. So that's pretty high resistance, but it doesn't say what the resistance should be. It just says should be low in one direction and more 10 times in the other. Hmm, questionable. Let's move on, 13 to nine. So I'm gonna go 13 and then pin nine is down in the corner. Okay, we have 10 mega ohms on the reverse of that. Zero continuity. 12 to 11. So let's go 12 and 11. 13 mega ohms. Nothing the other way. 12 to 14. Nine mega ohms, nothing the other way. 15 to 14, 12 mega ohms, nothing the other way. And last we have 16 to 14, nothing. And 12 mega ohms. Now, that is pretty strange. I don't really feel that any measure of mega ohms is low resistance, but it does seem that this is working properly as far as diodes go because I have continuity one way, but not the other. A diode is basically a one-way valve. It lets electricity flow through one way, but it won't let it come back. So it looks like our little junction box checks out. All right, so that being said, we can narrow down the problem then to the igniter module here. Now we know the owner said that he replaced it. We're not quite sure what part he replaced it with. 
Um, there's no part number on here, so it might not be OEM, it might have been used, it might not have been good, um, it might have been shorted out by some of these wiring problems down here. So we're going to order one of those and see what happens. All right, we're back. So we ended up ordering a used ignition module off of eBay. Uh, the listing said that it came off a running bike, so let's hope that they were honest about that. Um, but when it came in the mail, I noticed something about it. This is the ignition module that I took off the bike and that our diagnostics led us to believe is faulty. And here is the ignition module we got from eBay. You can see it has the Mitsubishi star on it. It has part numbers. <laughs> Those are all absent on the mystery module here. So that to me is pretty good indication that this might be the reason the bike won't run. But we won't know until we plug it in and test it again. So let's get her going. All right, once again, we're gonna put our spark tester in line here. And we'll see if she's got any spark now. All right, so that was it. The problem was the ignition module. Let's see if the bike will start now that it has spark. Let's give her a little choke. That needs an adjustment. go and see who she does oh almost well I think she might need some carburetor work but at least we know we got the spark issue solved all right, and with that, uh, I'm gonna throw this thing back together and hand it back over to the customer. He was pretty clear that he was capable of doing carburetor work himself. He just wanted someone to sort out all the electrical diagnostics. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any updates from me or my projects. And until next time, keep it shiny side up.